Good morning. Testing, good, thank you. I hope you had a little extended uh, visiting time, maybe got to share with somebody you haven't shared with in a little while. Uh, this morning we've had trouble with our connections, sound connections here within the sanctuary, and our live streaming is not working. So I welcome you here to the sanctuary, and I welcome folks who are going to join us online through the recorded uh, video on YouTube later today. So thank you for being with us and thank you for worshiping with us. This is a great day in the life of the church, not only because you get to hear me preach, um, but there is a wonderful layout of food downstairs hosted by our two very special friends and great couple, Dennis McLean and David Turner. <laughs> this is their 47th anniversary, I mean 41st anniversary, but the next six will be okay too. And tagging along with them, are Doug Williams and Noreen Banyan, who have been married 20 years this week. So you get... <laughs> the Inquirer's conversation continues today at 11.45, or as soon as every bit of food has gone downstairs in the Friendship Hall. So. We will wait a little while to have a snack or two. Uh, the gay men's group summer barbecue is this afternoon at five. I am sorry that I'm not able to attend. I once again have a class at four o'clock this afternoon. If you may not know, uh, one of the requirements for standing, well, one of the requirements for my being here was to have standing in the denomination. And one of the requirements for having standing in the denomination was to take racial equity training. And so for the last two weeks, uh, we've had 20 hours of training, which our internet went out yesterday afternoon, so our class finished up this morning at 9 o'clock. Um, so if you hear me kind of stumble through things, that is why. It's always good to have an excuse, isn't it? When you're not with them. Chris Byrne has uh, texted me this morning that she has COVID, and she will not be picking up the tickets on the 28th at the ball game on Thursday night, which we appreciate Chris Kane pulling all that together, but she will have a substitute there at the gate for the tickets. Um, a very important time for folks online and here. On, uh, we'll be on Zoom on uh, Sunday, July the 31st at 4 p.m. The members of the transition team and I will send out a document this coming week uh, concerning what happens during this time between pastors. What are my responsibilities? What are the transition team's responsibilities? And most of all, what are your responsibilities during this time as we seek to know in a meaningful way the identity of this church uh, before you go to look for a pastor? So I think those are the things that we need to lift up at this time. I know Kathleen wants everybody to know that she's going on vacation and I'm not going to mention that because I'm not going on vacation. Um, so, let's take a deep breath. Please join me in sharing together the mission of our church. As we say in unison, we believe God calls us to embody a forward-thinking, courageous, and diverse Christian community 
follow the ways of Jesus the Christ as a grace-filled spiritual congregation. Practice affirming and radical hospitality. Engage our local and global community with acts of love, mercy, peace, and justice. Bill Choir. If you will, please rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. We give praise and thanks to God. We do not live in alienation from God. For we seek to put off our old nature and be renewed in our minds. And revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
A reading from the book of Luke. One day Jesus was praying, and when he had finished, one of the disciples asked, Rabbi, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Abba God, hallowed be your name. May your reign come. Give us today tomorrow's bread. Forgive us our sins, for we too forgive everyone who sins against us. And don't let us be subjected to the test. Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, a neighbor, and you go to your neighbor at midnight and say, lend me three loaves of bread, because friends of mine on a journey have come to me, and I have nothing to set before them. Then your neighbor says, leave me alone. The door is already locked and the children and I are in bed. I can't get up to look after your needs. I tell you, though your neighbor will not get up to give you the bread out of friendship, your persistence will make your neighbor get up and give you as much as you need. That's why I tell you, keep asking and you'll receive. Keep looking and you'll find. Keep knocking, and you will, the door will be opened for you. For whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, is admitted. What parents among you will give a snake to their child when the child asks for a fish? Or a scorpion when the child asks for an egg? If you with all of your sins, know how to give your children good things, how much more will, will our heavenly Abba give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Go to sleep. No. We're turning the light off now. That's right. Time to go to sleep. Have you brushed your teeth? All right, go brush your teeth. Are you ready to go to bed? Have you said your prayers? Hmm. I'm going to stand here and listen. Yes, thank you. God bless mom. God bless daddy. Don't forget your brother Jack. Okay. God bless Aunt Frances and Uncle Doc and John and Bob and Hollis. God bless Aunt Nell. God bless. That's enough now. Time to quiet down. I'm turning off the light now. Time to go to sleep. Who among you who has children or have had children would say to them, say your prayers before you go to sleep? Who among you would at some point help your child to transition from hearing you pray for them, which even now, sometimes I look at Virginia in bed and I say, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm praying for the children (laughs) and the grandchildren. They need it so much. But do you know what you're asking for when you ask to be taught to pray as John taught his disciples? So let's step back a little bit 
an almost contemporary time and look at what John did. What does Luke say about John? He has this kind of history he lays out before us. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Herod was the tetrarch over um, Galilee, and then uh, Pontius Pilate was the governor over... Caiaphas, the word of God comes to John in the wilderness, and John ben Zechariah goes out into all the country along the Jordan, preaching a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Oh, maybe that's it. Jesus' disciples want to know how to pray for the forgiveness of sins. But Luke goes on as it is written in the book of Isaiah, the prophet, a voice of one, not the word of God coming to John, but a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the paths for him. This is a real um, reclamation project, isn't it? The hills shall be made low, and the valleys shall be filled up. The crooked roads shall be made straight. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And why? So that all people will see God's salvation. So maybe that's it. Jesus' disciples want Jesus to teach them to pray for salvation. Look what happens. Do they know the whole story? Do they remember John, what he says to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him? You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit. Keep in, in keeping with repentance. Do not say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Hmm. Are Jesus' disciples asking to learn to pray for a new word of God. Hmm. Jesus' disciples, good Jewish folks, they are part of Abraham. So, what is this about don't Say to me, don't say to John that you have this history, that you have this special place of privilege, that you are able to understand salvation. Are you able to understand it without repentance, without forgiveness? Is this what John is driving at? What should we do, the crowd says. And John answers, well, any of you with two shirts give one to someone who needs one, and any of you who have extra food, share that also. And then the tax collectors come to be baptized, and they ask, what should we do? And he says, don't collect any more than you are required to. And the soldiers come to him and say, what should we do? And he says, don't extort money, and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Now, but this time we have John's disciples, we have the tax collectors, we have the soldiers, we have all of these people who are coming together. The word of God came to John in the wilderness and he began to preach. And people respond with expectancy and with wonder, are you the Messiah? I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful 
the now will come. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see the connections, the ministry of John, the ministry of Jesus, the day of Pentecost, moving through the gospel, moving through the lives of these people who are searching to know their identity. This land of Judea and Galilee is thoroughly secured by those who owe position and power to Rome, Caesar, Herod, Pontius Pilate. But now it's becoming encircled by Luke's imaginative narrative in which we have John the Baptist out there in the wilderness around the Jordan, and we have Jesus and the disciples coming down through Galilee towards Jerusalem. We see this encirclement of the people who feel that they are in power, who are convinced that they are in power, by those people who are powerless and yet seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. John is preaching a new kind of security, directing people to give a coat, share their food, to not defraud, to not extort. Jesus is telling people to approach the holy, not only through the priests in the temple, but with the people in the villages and in the countryside. Jesus is saying, ask, seek, knock. Why? To expect the Holy Spirit. Pray for your family. Pray for your church. Pray with expectancy for the Holy Spirit. John told of Jesus baptizing with Holy Spirit and fire, and Jesus does ask for this Holy Spirit. This encirclement by the Word of God around the whole land of Judea and Galilee culminates in the fire and Holy Spirit of Pentecost. There is a vision of sharing, a vision of living with integrity, a vision of giving the gifts that the children really need, undergirded by repentance and forgiveness. And you know, that examination of the identity of the people of God has now come full circle, hasn't it? Back to us. Are we praying for the Holy Spirit? Are we listening for the future? Teach us to pray for the Holy Spirit that we might carry that bonding power of Pentecost into our future. When I was very young, I would go to bed and I would say, Mom, what should I pray for? And she said, well, you've been praying for your family. You've been praying for your church. You know what to pray for. No, Mom, I don't think that's doing any good. Everybody's about the same as they were. (laughs) She said, well, then pray the Lord's Prayer. And so day after day, night after night, I would pray the Lord's Prayer. And one night I felt that strange feeling. Do you ever feel that coming up your spine into your mind? Of the Holy Spirit coming in, filling up my heart. Now I still needed to repent and to be forgiven for a lot of things. Pray as we move into this time of transition. Pray for vision that is concrete and shareable. Pray for response to those who ask. Pray for those who are seeking. Pray for those who knock on our door. 
pray for the fruits of repentance within ourselves, within our congregation. And the Holy Spirit will come to you. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Encircle us in our place of security. 
encircle us in this land that is not our land. Encircle us and be with us and lead us into repentance and forgiveness and asking Come, Holy Spirit, come. We lift up to you this day the Stouffer family on the loss of John, for persons who are suffering from heat, drought, and hunger, for Bonnie's friend Martha, for Andrew and Isaac, for Donna's husband Barry, for Donna's mother Jean, for Maria's daughter. Nancy asks for prayers for her daughter, Jenna, and for her niece. Jim asks for prayers for Larry and for his husband, Mark. Allison asks for prayers for her son, John. We continue in prayer for the people of Ukraine, for each child, soldier, man, and woman. For all those who live under threat of violence, we pray for peace. We pray for Jerry and we pray for Betty. We pray for the board and we pray for us. We pray for the transition team, for Nancy and Peggy and Jim, Bev and Ty and Kara, Penny and myself. Eleanor asks for prayers for her sister-in-law and husband. Alice asks for prayers for Ron. And now if you have someone you would like to pray for, those of you who are hearing this recording at home, if you're able to um, email the church, at uh, pastor at uccashville.org. Uh, we'll be glad to carry your prayer request into next Sunday's service and also into our Wednesday noon prayer service. If you have a name to share this morning in the congregation, there is a prayer card in your um, attendance pad if you would like to share that name as well as speak it this morning. Are there names or concerns you would share? For Karen? Terry. For Debbie and Earl? Safe travel for... Athena and the boys. God in your mercy. And hearing our prayers, Lord. Be with us. Be with us as we come together. Be with us as we look for your vision, for your word, and for the moving of the Spirit among us. Amen.
offering plates were placed at the door as you came in to receive our morning offering. Plates will also be there as you leave if you would like to make an offering that you have overlooked this morning. And there are many ways to donate to the church. Let us receive our morning offering. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we bring our offerings today in response to your generous gifts. We return them in part to you, not to earn favor or forgiveness, but in gratitude, expressing exuberance for their use and learning by your example to share that some benevolence with others or same benevolence with others. May our lives reflect your kindness and generosity to others, regardless of need, behavior, or acknowledgement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
There are so many times in life when we must ask for forgiveness. There are so many events in life or so many occasions when we feel we just have to open our hearts and confess. But this is not one of those times or one of those days. Grace is alive and abundant and full of this place. And this place is full of it. So receive the grace of God. Take it into your heart and mind. Be nourished by it. And live this week in knowledge of it. Amen.